the Firebringers. A bitter wind howled over the desolate craggy slopes. Sarah shivered as she peered into the grey mist. Her foot slipped and she stumbled on the stony ground. She reached out for Jamie's hand. At least it seems to be going downhill. With any luck, we'll get out of this mist soon. What's that? It came from behind those boulders. Yeah, here we are. The mist is clearing. Why don't we go and see what it is? Well, okay. and shaggy. A whole herd of them. I hope they're not fierce. They must be woolly mammoths. Maybe they won't notice us as long as we keep really quiet. I thought mammoths were extinct. Well, that lot don't look too extinct to me. I think we should get out of here. Good idea. Oh no! What's that? A woolly rhinoceros? I don't know about you, but this is making me feel jumpy. Seems like we're in some kind of prehistoric theme park. Prehistoric sounds about right. Not sure about a theme park, though. Maybe we'd better find some shelter before it gets dark. Ah! <gasps> a saber-toothed tiger! This is a nightmare! You're telling me! It's coming for us! No! Look, there's someone it seems much more interested in. <sighs> Blimey! Now he looks really prehistoric. A caveman! A cave boy? He's not much older than us. Dressed in animal skins and carrying a huge club. <laughs> Phew, that was close. Amazing. How did he do that? The tiger just gave up and went. What tribe you from? We're from a friendly tribe. We've come from far away and we're looking for shelter for the night. My name's Jamie, and this is Sarah. What's your name? I am Rana. You come to my king. Looks like we haven't got much choice. What's that noise? Wolves, of course. You don't have wolves where you come from? It seems we don't have a lot of things you have. Like we don't wear animal skins like you do. You have strange covering. This not animal skin. It's cotton made by weaving. Cotton? Weaving? I do not know these things. It's very comfortable and soft. Come into my cave. Follow me. What, on our hands and knees? The entrance is a bit small, isn't it? I get claustrophobic in small places. Oh well, here goes. At least we've got some shelter for the night. Maybe there'll be something to eat as well. Is this your family? Er, uh, I mean tribe. This my tribe. And this, fire. This very good fire is my fire. A gift to me from Sky God. I never thought of fire ever belonging to anyone before. How come the Sky God gave you the fire? I out hunting a moon ago. Do you think he means mud? There is storm. Tree is hit by a piece of sky. Lightning? Tree burns with big flames. I break off branch and bring it back to cave. It is my fire. And my tribe make me leader. Oh! What's that? Take no notice. It's Zog. He leader before Sky God gave me fire. Now he angry he not leader anymore. He's ugly. I think I'd rather have a woolly mammoth any day. You're right. He doesn't look very friendly. Sit, eat, join my tribe for meal. Raw meat? Do we have to? I know what. Rana, can I borrow your spear for a minute? You want spear? Nothing to hunt in here. <laughs> I think we just heard the first caveman joke. I want to just try something. Oh, 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 oh. Why you burn good meat? It's hard to hunt reindeer. Then you burn it. Just hang on a minute. Looks done. Taste it. Eat burnt meat? Oh, give me. 
It's good. Oh, try burn meat. I could say we've just taken part in the world's very first barbecue. I wonder if you can buy reindeer in the supermarket. Tell me about your tribe. You eat reindeer? Not often. Well, never really. But we do eat cattle and sheep and pigs. They eat animals? I not heard of them. We only have bear and mammoth and tiger. And reindeer, of course. Do your animals run fast? Not as fast as reindeer. Our tribe has fire too. We can make fire any time we like. <gasps> you know how to make fire? Well, not really. You have to have a matchbox. What my sister means is that it takes a long time. It's very powerful magic, and we're too tired to try it tonight. All tired. But you sleep now. Tomorrow, we talk more of your tribe. Jamie, you awake? Yeah. Why did you tell them we could make fire? Seemed like a good idea at the time. Didn't like the look on Zog's face. <laughs> what you could see of it under all that hair. He's got it in for Rana, and I reckon he doesn't think much of us either. I know what you mean. I don't fancy getting into a fight with him. Did you see those muscles? So I thought it might be a good idea to say we knew something important. And maybe he'll leave us alone. I just hope you haven't landed us in more trouble. You haven't got a box of matches on you, have you? No, but don't worry, I'll think of something. Steal my fire. I'm uh, after him. We'll go with you. Come on, Sarah. Quick, we're coming. Watch out. It's a tiger again, sinking its teeth into a wolf. What are you doing? I'll just throw this stone, frighten it off. Hey, look, Sparks. Must have been Flint. The wolf's injured. Better see if it's okay. Take care. Wolf fierce. Bad animal. <laughs> Not this one. Look, it's licking my hand. I don't think it's injured. Probably just in shock. Hungry, maybe. You got any meat, Rana? Here, small piece. Thanks. Here you are, boy. We go now. We find Zog. The wolf's following us, just like a pet. Truly, you come from tribe with great wisdom. Never have man and wolf been friends. Let's give it a name. How about dog? We must hurry now. What's wrong, Ronnie? You seem nervous. It's country of my enemies here, the Barg tribe. If they find us, they kill us. Look, isn't that smoke coming from behind those bushes? Down, we must hide. What is it? Look through bush. It's Zog. Yes, with my fire, talking to Bog Tribe. He give my fire to Bog Tribe. He die for this. His gift of fire. For this, you kill Tribe of Rana, everyone. Oh. We better get back to the cave and warn the others. Coming. Oops. Oh, oh no, Jamie, you clumsy idiot. I attack Bog. Ah! Help! All the other Bogs! Down, boy. Sit. The tribe of Rana has powerful friends. These two wondrous beings have magic knowledge. They can tame wolf and make fire. 
They lie. No man can make fire. Prove it or die. Okay, we will. But only on condition there is peace between the tribe of Rana and the Bargs. <laughs> right, Jamie, you got us into this. Now you can get us out of it. Do your boy scout act. Well, you can find some dry leaves and grass while I look for a couple of sticks to rub together. Stand back. Powerful magic takes time. <laughs> well, here's your dry grass. How long do you think they'll wait? <laughs> Not much longer by the look of things. <laughs> hey, I've just had an idea. Remember when you threw the stone at the tiger? Of course, that's what we need. A couple of flints. Here's one and another. Now try rubbing them together. That's it, we've done it. Look, fire. <laughs> you see, man can make fire too. Anybody can do it. We will give you this powerful magic on condition you live in peace with the tribe of Rhina. We should share knowledge freely, not fight for it. You know, I think I've had enough of cavemen for a while. They're too primitive for me. Well, we've helped them on their way. We've shown them how to make fire and how to cook, and we've given them their first pet. Do you think we should have shown them the wheel? No, I think we'll let them find that out for themselves. Yeah, why not? I'm dying to get home and have a hot bath. And how about some barbecued reindeer for supper? No, don't think they'll have it in the supermarket. The music in The Firebringers is taken from Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. The first movement, Allegro con Brio, begins with the most famous opening of any symphony, with the strings playing four loud, heavy chords. The strings play the four chords again, but this time more delicately. The strings and wind, playing very quietly, are suddenly interrupted again by the four chord tune, this time played by all the strings and the brass. The second movement, Andante con moto, begins with a gentle, lilting tune played by the strings. Then the brass turn this gentle tune into a march. Towards the end, the march returns, this time with loud drum rolls. Although the third movement, Allegro, begins very quietly, it soon gets louder, with the brass and then the strings playing a grand march.
Now the cellos and double basses introduce a quick scurrying tune. The tune that was played as a march before is now played very quietly by the wind and plucked strings. Without stopping, the orchestra rushes into the fourth and final movement with its triumphant opening. Suddenly, the four chord tune from the first movement reappears, played quietly by the strings and the wind. At the end, the brass blare and the orchestra builds up to one of the grandest loudest and longest endings to any symphony. These are just some of the highlights from Beethoven's Symphony No. 5. You're bound to discover more every time you listen.